O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Sing, choirs of angels, sing in exaltation, sing, all ye citizens of heaven above. Glory to God, all glory in the highest. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. We continue these last days of our Christmas season. It's a Christmas Day weekday here on Thursday. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through your Son raised up your eternal light for all nations, grant that your people may come to acknowledge the full splendor of their Redeemer, that, bathed evermore in his radiance, they may reach everlasting glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, we love God because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, but hates his brother, he is a liar. For whoever does not love a brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. This is the commandment we have from him. Whoever loves God must also love his brother. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. For whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. O God, with your judgment endow the king, and with your justice the king's son. He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Lord, Lord every, every nation, nation on, on earth, earth will adore you. Glory. From fraud and violence he shall redeem them, and precious shall their blood be in his sight. May they be prayed for continually, day by day shall they bless him. 
Lord, every, every nation on earth, earth will adore, adore you. May his name be blessed forever. As long as the sun, his name shall remain. In him shall all the tribes of the earth be blessed. All the nations shall proclaim his happiness. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit, and news of him spread throughout the whole region. He taught in their synagogues and was praised by all. He came to Nazareth, where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He enrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him, and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. The Gospel of the Lord. The epiphanies continue, and as we celebrate these last days of our Christmas season, these manifestations, these revealings, of who Jesus is and what he came to do in this world. And today is another one of those minor epiphanies, although minor might be not quite the word we want to say it. He unrolls the scroll from Isaiah and chooses a prophecy of the Messiah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. It was not the anointing of the oil of kings, but rather the anointing of the Holy Spirit when Jesus was at the Jordan River and the sky opened up and the dove hovered over him, anointing him with God's blessings, God's love, to bring glad tidings to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives, recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year of jubilee to the Lord. The year of jubilee in the Old Testament goes way back to the book of Leviticus from the Mosaic Law, and what they were to do was, after seven sets of seven years, In other words, after 49 years, the 50th year was to be always a a year of jubilee. It was a year in which the land was to rest and remain fallow. It was a year in which all land would go back to the original owners. All debts were either suspended or forgiven. Slaves were to be set free. It was a year of great rejoicing, indeed a year of of freedom, a year of jubilation. 
in the Old Testament times that year, in whatever way they managed to put it into practice, theologians are not exactly sure how practical they could do that, but nonetheless, it was still set in time. It was once every 50 years. But with the advent and coming of our Lord, he breaks through all time and space. The year of Jubilee begins with his anointing of that Holy Spirit, the breath of that Holy Spirit that will be breathed upon the church that he will found and it's not to be every 50 years. It's to be always. In other words, it's not about external freedoms, but rather in the deepest part of the core of our being, the true freedom that God has set us free from the enslavement of sin that we can so easily fall into. And it's not by our power in any way, shape, or form that we are freed, even though that is the horrible lie and myth that much of our culture lives in today, that it's our own self-sufficiency that redeems us, that enables us, and saves us. And that's why more and more our culture is drifting away from God, because they no longer see a need for Him. But all these physical things that we've become to rely on so much will pass. And what matters most, of course, is our spiritual life, eternity. We have to believe, we have to cling to Jesus, anointed in that Holy Spirit, who saves us by the power of that cross. We need to continually turn to him in our brokenness and ask him to always pardon us and have mercy on us and to continue to free us from all sin. He will do that for us. He indeed has come to proclaim liberty to we who were once captive, we who are now free in his life and in his love. Aware of the need for God's love to transform our fallen world, we turn to him in humble petition that the church may continue to be empowered to carry on the mission of evangelization in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. That those who serve in public office may be motivated by Christ's call to build a just and peaceful world. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. That those who suffer from poverty or imprisonment and those with physical disabilities might find hope in the message of Christ's love, let us pray to the Lord. That our local faith community might heed Christ's call to love of neighbor and to build a culture devoted to peace, let us pray. We pray for those who have died, especially in this Mass. We remember the repose of the souls, first of all, of Lee Doberstein, in whom this Mass is being offered. And we also remember the clergy of this Diocese of Green Bay that have passed on this date. Reverend Arsentius Van Grotel in 1982, Reverend Joseph Durin in 1987, Reverend Joseph Van Bogart in 1946, and Reverend Hubert Kaminsky in 1987. May they find rest in the eternal love of God. Let us pray. <coughs> God, our Father, who sent your Son, Jesus, to transform a fallen world, hear our prayers that our world may become a civilization rooted in your love through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs>
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us new by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <clears throat> the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, <clears throat> hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. communion and upon God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that all who believe in him may not perish but may have eternal life.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by the power of these holy mysteries, our life may be constantly sustained through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We'll sing the third verse of our opening hymn, number 81 in the hymnals. Yea, Lord, we greet thee, born this happy morning, Jesus, to thee be all glory given. Word of the Father, now in flesh appearing, O come, let us adore him. Come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. 